Welcome to Land House. I'm Seth. I'm here with Mike, a friend of mine for over a year. We're going to be installing a three-quarter inch ram pump here on his homestead to take water for his chickens and pigs. So I will walk you through our setup real quick, but if you want to see what he has been using, check out his brand new YouTube channel, Land Tree Air Homestead. I have a link to that in the description down below. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at where this pump is going to be going. Let me walk you through our setup idea real quick. Right over here is a culvert that is going to be an easy place to catch the water. And so that will be our initial intake. You can see right down in there. It's flowing, I'm hoping, somewhere around 10 gallons a minute. So it has more than enough water here. So our first bucket will be there. It'll catch the water. The supply line will sneak down into the creek a little bit. And we'll have to see how much pipe we've got. But we will find a place somewhere in here for that bucket to rest. You know, probably right in there where that patch of uh, nettle is. So that's where our supply line and bucket will go to. Drive pipe will go from that and it will uh, use this head pressure here that will come down to our pump location, which is going to be right over here on the right side of the creek. And from there, we're going to take the water up to the storage. Let me zoom in so you can see where those tanks are from here. This is going to be a full install, so before we begin that process, let me just do a brief overview of what a ram pump is. So this is the three quarter inch ram pump. I have four sizes available on my website, landhouse.com. So water is going to come into this side right here and it's going to be flowing and also falling. So the fall is called head pressure. So for every one foot of drop that comes into this, you can get seven feet of lift out. So the concept is water comes down and it falls into here and it's going to try to go this way. And it's going to smack that valve closed. And when that happens, a pressure wave is created. Some of the wave goes back up the pipe and some of the wave goes into the secondary valve, which then accumulates in this pressure tank. And the pressure that's in here wants to escape somewhere, and so some of it goes back out this delivery side here. So whenever that pressure wave happens, and it goes this way and that way, the pressure here in this valve is dropped. So the little swing will fall back open again, and it will wait for the pressure wave to come back down and do it again. So you'll see this in operation here in just a bit. The first thing we're going to do is install our initial intake out of that culvert pipe. And we're going to use this five gallon bucket with one of my favorite products. It's a Unisil. It's a little rubber grommet that I will just stick about halfway into this bucket. So water will pour in with silt and debris. Uh, we do have a screen to put on top of here, but silt's still going to build up. And this will allow us to have a mostly air free source that will collect some silt over time. So I've just got a hole saw that's the correct size for this unisil. I'm going to just drill right here about midway up the bucket. Okay, there we go. And then that unisil just will press into there, just like that. And whenever that pipe goes in there, it will flare out the backside and it will make a very nice seal around the pipe. What's cool about these is you don't have to access the inside in order to use them. This bucket is going to be our initial intake. This next bucket is something that I have found to be very helpful and it will make sure that the drive pipe does not have air getting into it. If air gets to the ram pump, it'll stop it. So the second bucket is going to be another filter and also going to have that midway hole for the intake. And on this bucket, I have got a lid and I'm going to put another one of these Unisil right here in the top and that's where the water from the first bucket will come down the creek and enter into this one. We'll also have to drill a couple of holes in here to let some excess water out or air. So I'm going to put another one right here midway on this bucket. I think I'm going to offset this a little bit because that hole might be awkward to drill into. Now I'm just going to put a couple of holes in here to let some water out and air out if it accumulates in here. 
We're using a piece of hardware mesh or hardware cloth to put over the bucket. So whenever a big rainstorm comes, it won't wash out the screen, hopefully. So that will go down first, and then we will put this down on top of that to catch the small stuff that may be entering into the bucket. If the ram pump secondary valve gets some trash in it, it will actually prevent this valve from closing and the pump won't work. So we wanna make sure we keep all the little debris out of there. When it comes time to clean out this bucket, I have found that it's really helpful if you can disconnect the supply line. And so the pipe that we have here has the bell on one side and that acts as a coupling. But if you take the other end of the pipe you're gonna use and just cut off a section, I'm gonna do about six to eight inches here. So that right there is gonna go into that unisil and the other end of this has the bell. And so you can just connect that in here and then whenever you have to drain this bucket, we're not gonna glue this piece so we can just undo that. This will be attached to the bucket. You can dump everything or clean it out however you need to. And then this will still be in the creek. You can just put everything back in there, good to go. So this right here needs to go into the unisil and the smaller size like this isn't too bad to work with. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get this pushed in without much trouble. You can actually take a file and file this down. Hopefully we don't have to today. All right, there we go. It's in there about an inch or so. And that's all you have to do with that. All right, we've got just a regular concrete block down here to bring the bucket up a little bit. Set this down here. Now I'm seeing the water is not quite in one spot enough to fill the bucket quickly, so I'm gonna put some rocks up here. Hopefully bring that stream down a little. That's pretty good. So that may wash out and have to be replaced after the next big rain, but it's got a full flow down here in the pipe and it should be more than enough to fill this uh, next bucket. The first pipe we have is called the supply line and it's gonna bring water from the source to our second bucket. Like I mentioned before, we're not gonna glue that. So if, it, if the bucket needs to be cleaned later on, we can just pull that out and dump the bucket. You can already see the debris that's being trapped by our screen. And this kind of stuff right here, believe it or not, is enough to stop the ram pump if it gets caught in that secondary valve. Here's the other end of that 20 foot section of supply line. So now that is gonna be going into the top of our bucket where we have this unisil. So I have a simple 90 and a short piece here that I'm just going to push into this lid. So the water from the supply line will come in here and then the drive pipe that's feeding the ram pump will come out here. So that needs to be facing down creek and this will be facing up there towards our supply. So you can see all this is pretty much low pressure mm -hmm. and uh, it shouldn't blow out. Okay. And you may just be able to put a rock on there and not to knock the lid down. Actually secure it? Okay, yeah. I'll see if I can find something. See, this one right here might be enough just to keep it. Okay. Should be more than enough. Okay. Now, we have more water than the ram pump is going to use, and so these little holes here will squirt water wow, out. Wow, that overflow. Yeah. Okay. And because this bucket will be full to the top, we will probably have this additional head pressure being used as well. Okay. So that gives us even more potential for the ram pump. Perfect. On the drive pipe, I'm going to do the same thing where I cut off a small section and this is going to go into the bucket. And so when the second bucket needs to be cleaned out, we can simply just remove this first coupling here to get to everything.
in typical land to house fashion, I forgot the primer to uh, install this pipe right here together. So we're using some heavy duty cement and uh, it's gonna be fine. This is low pressure in the drive pipe. So I'm gonna let this set up for about 20 minutes and then we'll get this in the water. Here's a little section of pipe that's gonna go into the bucket. All right, I think that'll stay. I've got a regular decking board here, and that's what's going to allow the pump to sit upright. And also, I'm going to be drilling a hole in this board to set a piece of rebar so that this doesn't wash the pump down the creek. Also, the pressure wave is going to move the pump if it's not locked down. So, let's go ahead and put a hole in here. I'm gonna go about right here. Just gonna allow that piece of rebar to fit in there. And now for the pump placement, it needs to go about right here. I like to use this secondary valve as the place to attach to. And I've just got some of this right here, which is plumber's strap. It's a metal strap that will keep this locked down. The main thing to consider whenever you put your ram pump on a board is that you still wanna be able to access the unions. So you'll see how the board doesn't exceed this union or that union. So we can go another couple of inches there and still get those undone. While the cement on the drive pipe is curing, we're going to go ahead and get the delivery pipe rolled up the hill. So in this case, we have a Schedule 40 roll pipe. Um, you can use PVC, you can use garden hose, um, as long as it's air uh, doesn't have any air leaks it will be just fine so we believe that our drive pipe is going to end up right over here we may have to cut it down a little bit to get the best placement but this little spot right over in here is where we're aiming for so we're going to run this roll pipe up here to be honest we'll probably throw it down from up there and then we're going to take it over to our tanks We have the delivery pipe laid out. And we've got some of these little barb fittings that we're gonna be using hose clamps on to get those attached. And we're short by a few feet, so we're gonna move on to garden hose after this. And uh, he'll probably come back later and finish this up with some more of this roll pipe. I'm gonna put those on there first. I can't tell you how many times I've... Luckily you can pull them all the way apart if you need. <laughs> Unless it's cold. And then it's just like permanent. <laughs> then it's not going anywhere. Since we're not lifting very high, this is going to be very low pressure. So these hose clamps will be overkill, but since we've got them, we might as well use them. At least they won't go anywhere when I run into them or something. <laughs> On top of the hill, there are two 275 gallon IBC totes, and they use both of these down here to connect together and run their garden hose down to their pigs and chickens. So for now, we're just gonna be using the garden hose attached or just uh, thrown into the cap. We now have the delivery pipe run up to the tanks, so it's time to get the drive pipe installed and the pump going. So let's go ahead and get this put down in the creek. Now it's really important to lock this down with rocks and heavy things so that it doesn't have any bounce. 
because you want the pressure wave from the ram pump to be following the path of the drive pipe and not bouncing and losing potential there. The power company sprayed. Right. And all 10 of their beehives completely died. Oh no. I'm gonna toss this down to you here. Get ready. Oh, or at least pretend to. <laughs> the left hand is broke. We just decided to give it a try without cutting. So it's gonna just rest somewhere down in here and we'll have to uh, make do. If it doesn't work, we will go back and cut the pipe so it's off to the side. The main thing you wanna do is keep the pump out of flash flood, otherwise it may get washed out. <laughs> There's your own. We still got it. Witness, still there. <laughs> now we have the opening scene of our movie. <laughs> Notice how I did Me exactly cackling. what he said not to do. Me cackling in the background. <laughs> What not to do while installing a ram pump. Whatever you do, throw don't it. drop this. Whatever you do, don't drop this. Oh, you mean throw it in the creek? <laughs> okay, is that good? Yep, that should be good. Okay. All right, let me get the uh, piece we need to attach the delivery side. Okay. One of the reasons the Landa House ram pump has a union on it is so that you can detach pipes like this to attach to your delivery and drive pipe with ease. Otherwise, it's difficult to get these pipes connected to the pump. It's also a good way to pull the pump out for maintenance or to open up things for the winter time and let them drain out. I see why that little gravel spot would have been good. For yeah. That board to sit on. Yeah, and I brought a piece of rebar to drive down to okay. keep it from moving, but okay. we can just put rocks on the board instead okay. if that would help. And so we should just set it in the creek from here? Yep. Okay. Unless you want to go ahead and put your uh, delivery on there while it's up and out. Here you go, I can hold it. That'll be helpful. These unions have O-rings inside of them. If they fall in the water and get lost, there'll be a leak and the pump will probably not work. So do be careful not to drop those. We've got a piece of rebar for that hole and I'm gonna use a, a hammer rock to uh, drive that down in the, the creek bed. If your ram pump is resting on rocks only, you can put more rocks on top of the board just to keep the pump in position. Okay, time to get the drive pipe attached to our bucket. I believe we have plenty of water coming in here. It's important to keep the drive pipe from bouncing, so I'm gonna find several rocks and just place them on top here. Now some places like this big drop, nothing I can do, but whenever I can, I'm gonna lock this down with some rocks. We opted for the rock idea because the rebar was just hitting more rock. If you'll open up your drive pipe ball valve, water is going to gush out of that waste valve. So what's happening now is water is bypassing the pump and it's going out the delivery side. It's gonna snake around until it matches the height of the source, which is gonna be a couple feet up here. And so now, if you will push down your waste valve, and you're gonna do that several times, what's happening is it's pushing water up the hill until we have enough water in this pipe that's pushing back down on the pump. So that right there may take anywhere from 10 times to 100 times to get it going. Every time you hear that valve snap closed, it's pushing just a little bit of water up that pipe. Oftentimes, whenever the pump does this where it doesn't want to cycle on its own, there is an air bubble stuck in the pipe. So he's gonna push and hold down the valve and we're gonna see if air will gurgle out of here. All right, and let go real quick. All right, and then do that again. So let's let it sit for about one minute and I'll check the bucket to make sure we have plenty of water. So an air bubble was the culprit. Now the reason it stopped is because now it's filling that pipe more. So do I continue? Yep. And you should feel a different kind of click now. It's slower. It's got a slow, what we're, we're aiming for is about one click per second. A lot more, yeah. Yeah, 
So now it's operating as it should without that air bubble. And as soon as there's enough pressure on that line, it'll cycle on its own. The pump now has enough back pressure in the delivery pipe that it is operating on its own. So we're gonna go ahead and walk up the hill and see if we can pick this pipe up and see where the water level is. I can actually see the pipe sinking down right there oh, yeah. as it's filling with water. The water is hitting yeah. it. Yep. That's so cool. That's amazing. See if the water's reached this point yet. It feels heavy. Not as heavy. So it's still so. working its way up. So we're close. Check it out. There it is. Creek water. Wow. <laughs> it's good timing because we're, we're out of water? I had to empty them to move them yesterday. <laughs> so I gotta get water to all the pigs. Oh, this is fantastic. But you can see it's not quite what you have with that gas pump, but it's 24-7. Yeah. Yep. It a bit. Yes. She's on top of the feed bucket. I said earlier when I was recording that I think the neighbors might appreciate this more than we do. <laughs> they don't have to listen to that pump run the whole time. Oh. She's taking it with her. So in just a short time, about 10 or 12 minutes, it already has a significant amount of water there in the bottom. So this thing will be full in the morning time. Now, I was just mentioning that this thing is surging and that is probably due to this being right at the level of losing back pressure. So he can either bring the pump up in the creek a little bit and that will reduce the potential up or he could take the delivery pipe, run it up the hill some to gain more height and then bring it back down. The pump install is complete and I want to walk through everything with you so you can see what it looks like now that it's done. Back up here at the source where we have the bucket with hardware cloth and some window screen. And we've kind of put some rocks up here to direct the water flow. And what we see going in is more than enough for the pump, which means there's overflow here and also down at our secondary bucket, which helps clean things a little bit up here. So. We can disconnect here if we need to, to clean that bucket out over time. And this pipe is considered the supply line. Comes down here to our bucket. Now this bucket could be considered a stand pipe, but it mostly just removes the air and also some silt. So let's see if we open this, if we find any silt in here just after about an hour of use. You can see the kind of silt that we have here in the mountains. So it's a little bit cloudy, but not too bad. So we've got overflow up top and we have overflow here. So we have more than enough water to run this system. Okay. Now we have a 60 foot drive pipe, which we've put rocks on to prevent any bouncing from happening. The smaller pumps don't bounce as much as the bigger pumps, but places like right here would bounce pretty good if we didn't put those rocks on there. If you stand back some, you can hear the sound of the pump and the sound of the drive pipe. Yeah. It just clicks a little bit. Here's a close up of where the pump is. And we did put rocks on the board instead of using that piece of rebar. As long as it's stationary, it'll be good. If you don't have the rocks, it can actually pull the whole pump out of the bucket up there and stop everything. From there, we've got that roll pipe going up the hill and onto the storage tanks. And the Green Mountain Way. And we did it. Thanks for watching. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this Ram Pump install. My friends Mike and Heather have their very own YouTube channel that they just started called Landtree Air Homestead. 
I've got a link in the description down below. Their first video is actually getting water from the creek and lifting it up to these storage tanks. So their neighbors are going to be much appreciative not having a gas pump going. Mm -hmm. And this will just be 24-7 putting water up at the top. So check out their channel. That's Landry Air Homestead. Link it below. And if you want a ram pump for your very own, I've got those links down below also. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. There we go. And then a pig screams in yeah. the middle. <laughs> this is the pump he's been using. Yes, I got, this was basically a barn find that I got from a friend I work with. And I got a really good deal on it. It hadn't ran in almost 10 years. I put some gas in it on, on the third pull it fired up. And for two summers now, I use this and it's worked great, but it's so loud and I have to haul fuel back and forth and it's just gonna be really great to not have to use this anymore. It looks good inside of the wagon too. Yeah, it is convenient. <laughs> and so you had to prime it before you uh, started yeah, pulling you water? Take, it was about, that was a little over a gallon of water to fill this. And then I had that set in that little pool I dug out with the rock. And as, I mean, until it runs out of gas, it would just pump and pump and pump. And I rigged this up to fit a garden hose because it was set up to do a two inch hose here. So I had put those reducers on just to get a garden hose to go fill the tanks and water the garden and stuff. So yeah, so this is the beginning stages of, it's called poopo culture. Um, the idea behind this is because you can see our dirt is mostly rock. There's really not much dirt there. It's everywhere. So these garden beds start out with the layer of cardboard, and that's just to prevent weeds from growing. We then start layering these large sized logs, ideally some stuff like we found that's already started to rot. The next phase is some green leaves and branches that will cut down from trees. Then we will fill it in with wood chips from the wood chip pile. And the final step is going to be covering that entire bed with dirt. And so over the years, all of this wood and that greenery and um, the wood chips will just break down and these will just build beautiful raised beds for the garden. And we won't have to worry about uh, tilling anymore um, or disking or anything like that. Um, it's a long process, but it's going to be really great for, for this area. Um, and then the greenhouse, we, we had really bad luck last year. We tried the plastic and it, it made it all summer and we had beautiful, we had tomato plants that were 10 feet tall, um, but a really bad storm came through and ripped all the plastic off. Um, so this year I've opted to go with this solid PVC roofing. Um, that is coming out pretty good so far. There's a couple of funky gaps in between some of the hoops that I need to patch up. Um, and you can't feel it much today, but on a warmer day, just stepping from there into here, you can feel the dramatic increase in temperature um, in here. So I'm going to complete this down to where those 1x4s are, and then eventually have the same PVC roofing below the 1x4s, but they're going to be hinged so I can bring them up and allow airflow to get through so it's not going to get too hot. You can kind of control the temperature in here. You may have enough drop from your tanks to do a drip system in here. We do, actually. <clears throat> um, somewhere we've got about 400 feet of drip line that we coiled up and then uh, last year it, it was really slow but we were able to leave the tank on and do each row for about an hour and it would soak it really well. And so now it's going to be even better that that water is going to be really consistent um, versus having to continually fill those tanks up over and over again. Yeah, because if you run that and you've got another, uh, you know, quarter gallon a minute coming into the tanks, yeah. you can run it for that I much can, longer. You can run it all night and then shut it off and then by the afternoon have a full tank again.